what is up guys and welcome to a special recap video for a specific game the game of the week my alabama crimson tide versus the georgia bulldogs and my alabama crimson tide came on top roll tide roll rtr so i'll recap the game here play by play and show you some statistics and all sorts of that before you watch this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel if you like college football. And let's hop straight into it. So, on the first play, Mac Jones sits back, looks to throw, gets hit as he throws, and the play is picked off by the count of the Georgia secondary. Now, I didn't... It was hard to tell if this was really a pick or not. It was really hard to tell. They didn't have a good angle on whether the ball touched the ground or not. But they gave it to him anyways. It could have gone either way. Mac Jones is picked off on his first play. Two plays later, Georgia is picked off by Alabama. They threw a pass. It bounced off the helmet of one of our defensive linemen. Or it bounced off the hand. Then fell into a lap of another defensive lineman. So we get the ball right back. And then a few plays later, Mac Jones sits back. Throws deep. 40 yards to John Mechie. 40-yard touchdown, Alabama goes up 7 to nothing. Then, a few drives stall out, Georgia looks, and they score a rushing touchdown to make it 7 to 7. Then, then a play that was really popular from this game, they take, Georgia takes James Cook, puts him out of motion to the sideline, and he's mismatched with an inside linebacker. And Georgia throws an 82-yard touchdown to James Cook. Now, I feel like this is one of the plays we really messed up. Smart play by Georgia. They motion him out. They see it's a mismatch on an inside linebacker. And James Cook used to be a wide receiver. This is really a wide receiver playing running back, really. So, he just runs straight past the inside linebacker. Inside linebacker cannot cover deep. Makes a mistake. Georgia scores a touchdown. Georgia leads 14-7. to Bama go, goes down and kicks a 33-yard field goal to make it 10-14. to UGA kicks a 50-yard field goal to make it 10-17. to Then Matt Jones finds Devontae Smith for a 17-yard TD-ish around that range to, to tie it up at 17-17. to and then with 0-23 left in the half, Georgia scores a touchdown to make it 24-17. to And then Bama marched down the field and kicked a 52-yard field goal right as half ended. Do you see that from Alabama kickers as much? No, you do not. That made me so happy. And I feel like it really gave the Alabama team some confidence and some... And just motivated them going into the second half. Now it was a... 52 yard yarder real record and that puts the game 24 20 going into halftime then bama comes out of halftime throws a 90 yard touchdown to waddle to make it 27 to 24 that was quite a touchdown defender fell down on the play and then georgia driving down the field one of the turning points in the game on a third and ten, Stetson looks deep, throws, and then it's batted off the hands of one of his receivers into the hands of true freshman Malachi Moore, and he picks it off and gives Alabama the ball back. Then Alabama in the end zone on third down, throws it to the end zone, and a questionable pass interference goal. Now, a lot of people say the refs were helping Bama on this play, or blah, 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 blah. To me, it was clear pass interference. I, I don't like to be the guy who calls pass interference a lot. But th to me, it was clear pass interference. He was pushing him out of bounds before the ball even got near him. He was pushing him out of bounds. It, it was clear to me. But hey, the announcers didn't think so. And a lot of other people didn't think so. So maybe I just don't know football. But it was clear pass interference to me. Then, because of the pass interference, they get an automatic first down. And then Najee scores a rushing touchdown from the two-yard line. The first 
rushing touchdown Georgia has gave up this year, and the four, first rushing touchdown Georgia has gave up to an opposing running back since the 20, 2018 SEC Championship game, also against Alabama. That was just Josh Jacobs scoring that touchdown. And that puts the game at 34-24, Bama by 10 points. Bama went from a 24-20 to deficit to a 34-24 to lead in just three minutes. And then, on third down, Stetson is rushed. He has to escape. He throws a very bad pass, and Daniel Wright picks him off. Daniel Wright's second pick of the season. Now, I like Daniel Wright. Don't get me long, wrong, but the guy's a liability. He gives up way too many big plays, but he can also make some very big plays with some interceptions, and I'll get to more of that later. And then, Matt on third down, or was it second down? I think it was. Matt Jones looks and finds Devontae Smith in the back of the end zone as he makes an amazing catch to put them up 41-24. to and then that would end up being the final score. Bama wins 41-24. Roll Tide Roll. This puts Nick Saban at 22-0 versus his former assistants. He is 3-0 against Kirby. I know he's beat Jeremy Pruitt a few times. Jimbo Fisher. Uh, McIlwain. All his assistants, they have not beat him yet. He is 22-0. I think Matt Jones cemented himself as a serious Heisman candidate tonight against the number one defense in the country. He had 400 yards and four touchdowns. Absolutely lighted, light, lighted that Georgia defense up. And here's a fun fact for you. Matt Jones is the only, only SEC quarterback in the last 20 seasons to have three straight 400-yard games. Not Joe Burrow, not Johnny Manziel, not Cam Newton, not Tim Tebow, not Tua Tungavailoa, not Drew Locke, not Nick Marshall, not Jake Coker. None of those guys had three straight 400-yard games. But Mac Jones has. I think he's a serious Heisman contender, and I love the way he's been playing. Really, really nice for Mac Jones. I think Najee is a dark horse Heisman contender. I don't see him winning it, but a lot of people do. He lights up the best run defense in the country for 162 total yards and a touchdown. Najee looking really impressive. I love me some Najee. Can't believe he's a senior now. The Bama defense steps up in the second half and forces Three interceptions, two of those coming in the second half. And they pitch a second half shutout. What an amazing, amazing game for our defense. They struggled in the first half, gave up a few big touchdowns. But then they came out in the second half, forced some turnovers, got some stops, and pitched a second half shutout. Really big for our defense. I think it'll be really big going down the road. And then Jalen and Devontae, Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith both both had over 160 yards. Very, very good for both of those receivers. But yes, I loved this game. I loved it. As an Alabama Crimson Tide fan, I was super, super, super nervous going into it. I really thought Georgia had a very, very good team, and they 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 do. But Alabama really played up to their potential and beat Number three, Georgia. Now it gets me to start thinking, who can hang with Alabama? Because, I mean, if Alabama can beat Georgia by 17 early in the season, I think they can do it again. I usually would go against teams that are having a rematch later in the season that they had earlier in the season, but I really think this Alabama team is different. I really think what they showed on the field tonight, they can do that again and beat Georgia again. And that gets me thinking, though, who can hang with Alabama? If it's not the number three team in the nation, who is it? I give you two. I give you two answers. Ohio State and Clemson. We saw what Clemson did this weekend, and I'll touch on that in the recap video. But Clemson, Clemson's a good team. 
Clemson's a very good team, and we've seen what they've done to Alabama in the past. Same with Ohio State. Ohio State's a very, very, very talented team, and we've seen what Ohio State has done to Alabama in the past, even if that was six years ago. I think those are the only two that can hang with Alabama right now if Alabama plays up to their full potential. Um, maybe Florida. Maybe Florida. Florida has an explosive offense. Maybe not that good of a defense. But I, I could see Florida maybe hanging with Alabama. So Florida, Ohio State, and Clemson are really the only ones I see right now hanging with Alabama. But uh, let me know your thoughts on the game. Because I was hooting and hollering and getting excited as I normally do on game day. And I had a fun time watching this one. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you have any takeaways from this game? Are you proud of blah, blah, blah if you're an Alabama fan, which most of my subscribers are? And do you think Alabama can hang with Clemson? Do you think Alabama should be number one? Let me know in the comments below. And peace.